Numbers can tell us powerful stories. The release of the World Bank Data Catalogue provides us with millions of numbers, showing how the world has developed over the last 60 years. These numbers can tell us how countries have changed in terms of health, in terms of education, and in terms of their human capital. And, as we move towards the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, they can tell us how close we are to achieving them. But numbers can tell us very little by themselves. In fact, when we flip between countries and developmental indicators, we're quickly overwhelmed by numbers. How are we going to make sense of all of them and release the story that they tell? Our entry for the World Bank's Apps for Development competition is Development Space. Development Space is an analysis tool for visualising, modelling and predicting world development. Let's see how it works. Here we have the Development Space window, which allows us to choose the indicators, the world region and the type of countries we are interested in learning more about. In the demo version, we use a set of indicators which are most relevant to the Millennium Development Goal. We have child mortality there, fertility rate, life expectancy, gross enrollment rate. And we can choose two of these indicators. So let's take child mortality and GDP as a good starting point. Now we'll go straight down to here, which is Generate Dev Space, and we'll click on this and let's get going. Now generation of development space is done live and this involves collating a lot of data in various ways and going through a set of 512 possible different models to see which of them gives the best description of the, of the data. So be patient. Here we have it. The left hand side of the screen shows the data while the right hand side provides a mathematical model of this data. Let's concentrate first on the data and look at the coloured lines travelling down from the top left to the bottom right of the screen. These show how six different countries, China, United States, Sweden, India, Kenya and Brazil, have improved in terms of reducing child mortality and increasing GDP over the last 60 years. If you've seen Gapminder or the World Bank Visualizer, you'll be familiar with this way of showing how countries' indicators have changed. This approach looks at one country at a time, telling its story, but it doesn't really give us a clear picture of development as a whole. What Development Space adds is a summary of how development across all countries has occurred. This is done with these little black lines here that look a little bit like tadpoles. We call these development vectors. The vectors show how, on average, development has changed from year to year. For example, let's take a point here where we have child mortality around 100 per 1,000 and GDP as a middling value. The development vector tells us on average we expect child mortality on the next year to go down by 10%. The development vectors are spread out over this whole development space and so they tell us what happened in various different situations throughout the history of the world. Essentially they give us a single picture of the average development of the whole world. These vectors generally point in the direction followed by the majority of the countries, but you'll also see outliers, for example up here and down here, where the pattern is less clear. It's here that fitting mathematical models helps. Over on the right hand side you can see a figure which shows the model fit to the data. Again, the tadpoles or the development vectors show how we expect countries to develop. But now, the coloured lines are not what actually happened to different countries over the last 60 years. Instead, they're predictions of what would have happened to these countries if they perfectly followed our model. Let's go back to an overview. We have the data on the left here, and we have our model on the right. We can see that our model gives a good description of the development of, for example, Sweden here in the light blue, and the United States in the dark blue. Comparing the data on the left and the model on the right, they roughly follow the same course. It's also inter interesting to look where our model makes incorrect predictions. Here we see that China and India, China in the red and India in the green, have overperformed during the last 60 years. They've had accelerating GDP and reduced child mortality that isn't predicted in the model. 
Such discrepancies don't mean that our model tells us the wrong story about world development. They instead allow us to identify countries which have done better than the average trend. This is really the essential idea of a mathematical model. It's a baseline description of the world against which individual stories can be compared. Kenya, which is marked in purple here, follows our model reasonably well. It generally follows the path which other now higher income countries have taken before it. The Millennium Development Goal for Kenya is to reduce child mortality by two-thirds by 2015 from its level in 1990. We can use the zoom tool here to zoom in on Kenya. Here we can see our model's prediction for how child mortality should change from 2008 to 2015. The dots represent what actually happened in the data up to 2008, and the crosses are our model predictions from 2008 onwards. History is in favour of a positive development in child mortality, but only time will tell if this can actually be achieved. Now we can return to the control window and see a mathematical description of our model. This is given in the text box here. Development space suggests three possible models of the data. These are the three models which provide the three best fits to the data. In the next video, we will discuss how to interpret and understand these equations, and how, by changing the number of terms in the model, we can affect the complexity in various ways. These equations will give us the next step to telling the story of world development. If you want to learn more about how to use models to understand the world, then the best thing to do is to try development space for yourself. Go into www.dev-space.org and turn your numbers into visual and mathematical models.